Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Factory Youth Online. Thank you for joining us here tonight. We are in Pastor Jim in Christie's backyard. That's where we're hanging out tonight. We've got something really special and exciting planned, and we're so glad you guys are here to be a part of it. I want to remind you guys that this weekend is going to be amazing. It's Easter Sunday. And Calvary Vero has an amazing Easter service planned. It's going to be online on Sunday morning at ccvb.net at 10 a.m. and all throughout the day every two hours. So 10, 12, 2, 4 till 6 p.m. So make some breakfast, invite your family to the living room, get comfy on the couch and watch Calvary Vero's Easter service with us. Don't forget to follow us uh, on our Instagram page at The Factory Youth. That's where we post all the updates about everything going on online here with The Factory and uh, other church events. If you don't want to miss out, make sure that you're there. We're so excited to have you tonight. It's going to be an amazing night. We've got something really special planned, just worship, study. It's going to be a really amazing time. We're so glad you're here. So why don't you get comfortable and come worship Jesus with us? And I 
take up my cross and I'll follow you. I take up my cross and I'll follow you. I take up my cross and I'll follow you. I take up my cross and I'll follow you. I take up my cross and I'll follow you. I take up my cross and I'll follow you. And I'll follow you. All right, so we are God's planning the students of the factory youth, and we're dropping off uh, watch kits. Watch kits. So factory youth online watch party kits. Yeah. We're coming for you. Woo! Leave it at the door. So if you guys want to be a part of it, you gotta DM us your address and maybe next week we will surprise you with a little sum sum. Send us a DM and uh, maybe we can God's play on you next week. Watch youth online every week. You All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back to Youth Online. Yes, and uh, man, this is crazy. This is already week four of us doing My this, goodness. which is, it seems like way too long since we were together in the yes. factory, but we're believing that God is in control and we'll be back soon. Yes. And uh, we're excited about what God wants to speak to us tonight. Now, if you watched last week, we did Wings and Things, <laughs> which was epic. True. And uh, I thought we would kind of continue on the same idea of food tonight. Mm -hmm. So last week we talked about chicken wings. We're going to talk about more food um, tonight. <laughs> and so really my message title and the thought that I want to give to us 
is what are you hungry for? Mm -hmm. What are you hungry for? And man, I swear, it seems like that is a conversation we have all the time. Absolutely. It's always like, <laughs> so what do you want to eat tonight? And we're like, I don't know. What do you want to eat tonight? And if it's a restaurant, we kind of go to the same, like five restaurants maybe. <laughs> and if it's at home, it's like the same meal. You know, like we rotate through our menu and it's kind of the same. But every night it's like, so babe, um, what are you hungry for tonight? And she's like, I don't know, I guess cauliflower rice. And she's like, what are you hungry for? And I'm like, I don't know, I guess like chicken and sweet potato fries. Like it's the same thing all the time. And, and I was just thinking about this idea and, and really the reason I'm bringing this up is we're gonna look at tonight really what Jesus was hungry for as he was entering into the last week of his life. Now, this is Thursday night. We know that on Sunday uh, is Easter Sunday, but Jesus did a lot in between or and before leading up to the moment where he would ultimately be crucified on Good Friday and then rise again on Easter Sunday. And this Thursday night is actually really special when you follow um, the life of Jesus. And it was this night that he introduced what we call communion or the Lord's Supper. And so I kind of want to look at that tonight and really what Jesus was hungry for as he was leading up to that last night for him. So this is Luke 22, verse 14, if you have a Bible. And it says this, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to the, them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Mm -hmm. Really what I want us to see is Jesus, when he sat down, I love that it says they reclined at the table. It wasn't like how we eat where there's like the table and the chairs and there's like social distancing, clear separation <laughs> between where you're eating. Back then, the, 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 the table was low to the ground and it was just a bunch of pillows around the table. And so they would sit on their knees or they would lay back and they would, they would take their bread or they would take their grapes or their hummus or whatever it was they were eating. And they would really be lean back. In fact, it, we're told that John the apostle was actually leaning and resting upon Jesus us during this meal. So it was real intimate. And Jesus says that he has eagerly desired to eat this meal with him. This was something Jesus was excited about. You ever have one of those meals? Like, you know, like, I can't wait this night. We're having this meal and we're, it's like, it, whatever, it's Wednesday night and we know, or it's Taco Tuesday or whatever it is. And we're like excited about, that's Jesus. He's excited about this meal. But the reason for that wasn't just because of what they were eating, but what this meal represented. And really what it shows us is that Jesus really desired for righteousness and relationship for people. Mm -hmm. yeah. What Jesus desired was righteousness and relationship with people. And that's what this meal represented. We're told two things that Jesus sort of passed around and, and shared with them and introduced a new way of thinking. First, we're told he took the bread and the bread represented righteousness. He said, this is my body, he says, which is broken for you. And he wasn't just speaking about the 12 apostles in the room. He was speaking beyond that. He was talking about humanity mm. and that his body was going to be broken so that broken, sinful humanity could be made righteous. Mm. What Jesus is doing is he is going to the cross. His body would be broken because he was putting in all the effort, all the work so that sinful humanity could be bought back and restored into right relationship with God. Our sin separates us from God, but then Jesus, his body was broken. He did all of the work so that we could be made righteous yeah. before God. Right. And what I love about that is that Jesus, because he's done all the work, there's no more work left for us to do. Yeah. One of the, the biggest errors in thinking, especially when it comes to God and man, is this idea that we have to work in order to achieve some sort of right standing with God. Like if I do enough good things or if I say no to enough bad things, then God's gonna like me. And what the gospel is saying and what Jesus is teaching us in this moment is that Jesus' body was completely broken. He did all of the work so that we could be made righteous before God. 
But then he also, not only did he take the bread and pass it around and say, this is my body that's broken, he also took the fruit of the vine or grape juice or wine or whatever it was, and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. And what this would represent is not only are we made righteous, but now we can have relationship with God. Yeah. Because we, now we, the, the, the body that's broken means, okay, you have a right standing with God. In other words, you aren't going to receive the punishment that you deserve because sin makes us deserving of punishment. So we're not going to receive that punishment anymore. But what the blood does is it covers our sins. It removes the filth. Mm -hmm. it, it makes us clean. And so now not only do we not get the punishment that we deserve, but we actually can step into relationship and closeness with God. Yeah. And so when Jesus was reclined around the table with his friends and he's saying, I've been so excited about this meal because what he's saying is no longer is it just going to be me and the 12 people in this room that are going to experience closeness to me. But because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross, now everybody and anybody could experience that same closeness Absolutely. that we could all come and even though we might not physically pull up a seat at the table spiritually we can pull up a seat yeah. at the table yes, sir. and so Jesus says I have eagerly desired for righteousness and relationship with humanity That's good. now the question I sort of was pondering and thinking about as I was sort of considering this text is do we have that same desire do we have the same desire for righteousness for ourselves and relationship with Jesus? Do we like Jesus where we sit down and we can, we can honestly tell ourselves that we have eagerly desired closeness with Jesus? The question is, what are we hungry for? And if we're not hungry for those things, Maybe you're there, you're like, I don't really care about this stuff. I don't think I'm that bad. Or do you know what? I just don't feel that far from God. Or do you know what? I'm doing my own thing and I don't need him right now. How do we get to a point where we realize that we actually do need Jesus? How do we come to a point where we hunger for what Jesus has? I want to give us two real simple points and then we'll call this thing a night. The first thought is this. We are hungry for what we eat. We are hungry for Amen. what we eat. <laughs> now, uh, we go to Ghana in West Africa a couple, or at least once a year. We've yeah. gone for the last three or four years. And uh, one of the things I love to ask some of the kids that we hang out with in Ghana is what their favorite meal is. So we'll hang out with the kids. I'm like, what is your favorite meal? If you could eat anything, what would it be? And their answer is always the same. It's fufu. Yeah. The answer is fufu, almost yes. always. Now, I can tell you that I've never asked you or any of them what their favorite meal was, and they're like, fufu. <laughs> never once has that been the response. Now, fufu, if you don't know, it's basically like a mashed up, unripe plantain, basically turned into a dough ball, and then it's uncooked, it's like a dough ball, and then it's surrounded by a soup, and they break off the dough ball, dip it into the soup, and eat it. And I, I talked to one, uh, uh, one guy there, he was telling us a story that they were in a church service. The church service was outside and the church service was interrupted because a bush rat interrupted the service. Now a bush rat is basically a rat that's the size of a possum. It's basically a rat and you see them on the side of the road when you're driving through Ghana. They're like this big, they're literal bush rats. He said it interrupted the service, so they chased the thing out and the, the, so the church service stopped, right? Bush rat runs through, like service is over. Yeah. They all get up and they chase the bush rat, they catch it, they kill it, and then guess what they make out of it? Foo -foo. Bush rat foo foo, I'm telling you right now. That's what they were excited That's to awesome. eat. Now, I've never had that desire. I've never thought like, man, I'm so hungry, wake up in the middle of the night, like I wish I could find a bush rat and make some foo foo. Yeah. But the reason for that is because that's not what I eat. Yeah. I eat pizza, right? Like I eat tacos, like I eat, that's, that's what I eat. And so the, it's not that what they eat is weird. Well, I mean, maybe, but it's not that it's weird, it's just unfamiliar. Yeah. yeah. And so like I could tell you some of the things that I eat and you'd be like, that's disgusting. And you would tell me some of the things that you eat and I'd be like, you are repulsive. <laughs> like it's the same kind of thing because you're hungry for what you eat. Yeah. You get a craving for what you're used to 
eating. Absolutely. And so the reason I bring that up is we get a deeper desire for relationship with Jesus by bringing him into our life. Wow. Yeah. We, we get a deeper desire by creating a diet in our life for Jesus. So, sir. And sometimes we're like, I don't have that diet. I don't have a relationship with Jesus. I don't have that desire. What we do is introduce him into our life. Yeah. What we do is, is bring them into our habits, bring them into our routines. I think right now, especially with us having to be quarantined and, and not being able to see our friends as much and things like that, it is a great opportunity for us to build a habit of bringing Jesus into our life. Absolutely. And it can start small, it can start simple. I'm not saying like you have to read the whole Bible tonight. <laughs> I'm saying take a moment and just ask God to meet you where you're at. Yeah. And we're hungry for what we eat. And so what I'm saying is bring Jesus into your life. Yeah. Bring him into your moments. And then the second thing I want us to say is that we are hungry for what we make room for. Yeah. We are hungry for what we make room for. I don't know about you, but every time I go to a Mexican restaurant, I fill up in, on chips and salsa. Yeah. <laughs> like I am horrible at planning. Like I sit down and you're like, I want to have a meal. I don't want to just eat chips and salsa. And then I swear every time, by the time my meal gets there, I'm like, I'm so full of yeah. chips and salsa. <laughs> and it's the same thing at like Olive Garden, like breadsticks. Oh, yeah. like, I'm just like crushing <laughs> breadsticks. And then my pasta comes and I'm like, I'm too full yeah. because I ate too many breadsticks. <laughs> And I wonder for some of us that the reason we don't have a deep desire for a relationship with God is because we haven't made any room for Him in our life. Wow. Yeah. We're too busy crushing, if you will, the breadsticks and the <laughs> chips and salsa around us yeah. that we haven't made room for the, the actual substance in our life. Yeah. Maybe we're filling our life with junk, things that don't need to be there. And the reason you don't find or don't feel like you have enough space for Jesus is because you've pushed him out by bringing in so many things that don't matter into your life. Yeah. Maybe it's time for us to sort of clear those things out. Yeah. Maybe it's time for us to say like, do you know what? I'm not going to fill up on chips and salsa. <laughs> I'm not just going to eat breadsticks. I'm going to actually eat the course, the reason I came here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for some of us, we need to do the same thing spiritually. We need to get rid of, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's an activity, maybe it's a way of thinking, maybe it's somebody we follow on Instagram, maybe it's something like that, that we just need to make room, get it out of our life so that we can make more room for Jesus in our life. If you make room for him in your life, he will show up every time. And maybe that's what you need to hear tonight. Maybe wherever you're watching and Maybe you're alone, maybe you've got a sibling around, or, or, or maybe you haven't seen a friend in two weeks. Maybe you feel like you're completely alone. Can I tell you, if you make room for God, He will show up every time. Absolutely. Scripture says He will never leave us nor forsake us. Yeah. That He promises peace that surpasses understanding. That He wants to give us joy in the midst of pain. That Jesus will show up in your life. We just got to make that room for Him. Yeah. And when you make that room, he will show up because he has a deep desire to be with you. And the same language that he used to talk to the apostles when he said, I have, I've had a, a fervent desire, a deep desire to share this meal with you. Can I tell you wherever you're at that Jesus has a deep desire to know you? Yeah. Jesus so much so that he willingly left heaven, came to earth, lived a perfect life, and then died on the cross. We're gonna celebrate that tomorrow on Good Friday, yeah. that Jesus died on the cross. But can I tell you the story didn't end there. Yeah. Jesus rose again three days later, defeating the grave, defeating sin, and promising that anybody that would place faith in him could have a right relationship with him, could be forgiven and could be close. Yeah. No matter how distant, no matter how messed up, no matter how broken we feel, Jesus promises closeness. Mm -hmm if we would just call on him. What are you hungry for tonight? Mm -hmm. Are you hungry for more of Jesus? Are you hungry for his plans in your life? Are you hungry for his purposes? If you are, all you have to do is say, I'm hungry for that. I'm gonna pray for you and give you an opportunity to do that. So Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you that you're here in this place. Lord, wherever we're at, scattered all over Vero Beach and beyond, God, we recognize that you are here in this place. God, you have a plan for our lives and you love us. Lord, we thank you that you had a deep desire that, that wouldn't even stop at pain or suffering or even death. Lord, you loved us that much. And so God, we ask that you would give us that same desire. Would you give us a hunger for you, a hunger for your plans, a hunger for your word, a hunger for the calling that you have on our lives. So God, we ask that you would come into our life. 
And if anybody's out there watching tonight and they don't know you, Lord, we pray that right now that they would give their hearts to you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen, if you're watching and you don't know Jesus, you don't have a relationship with him and you want to, you want to say, like, I want to respond to this message. I want a deeper hunger for Jesus. I want to ask you to do something crazy. Right now in the comments, just write the word me. Just say me. I want to know Jesus. And we'll get, we'll get in touch with you. We'll tell you how to follow Jesus. We'll, we'll, we'll welcome you into our group. We're so excited that you're with us. But if anyone at all, you're saying, like, I want that hunger. I want that relationship with Jesus. Just comment me and somebody will get to you. Hey, this has been the Factory Youth Online. We're so happy you've been with us. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Easter is on Sunday. We'll see you at ccvb.net. Let's go. Those bugs were brutal. Oh my gosh. We kept it